Hi, this is Gareth from Rockfiend, and with me now is Rob Wilde from Midnight City. Hi, Rob. Hi, Gareth. How are you doing, mate? I'm fine. How are you? Very good, mate. Very good. You can tell it's winter. We've both got our curtains shut in the rooms we're in now. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's getting no, cold. It's, it's yeah. getting cold. It says me sitting here with, like, a, a, you know, a T-shirt with no sleeves in. <laughs> are you showing off? Have you got your heating on? Well, I, I had it on earlier on, and it, it's it's... It's be, being used very intermittently, shall we say. You know, warms up for 10 minutes and then it goes off. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of things that's ongoing in your career just now that will hopefully pay for, for at least some of the heating. <laughs> I hope so, mate. That'd be good. That'd be good. So, Rob, uh, as I said, you are uh, with uh, Midnight City. But what we'll talk about, first of all, is you've been involved in the Darren Phillips project. Now, Darren, as uh, some viewers might be aware, um, is with East Temple Avenue. And he's brought out a, a new EP, the Acoustic Heart EP. And that's basically a five-track um, acoustic rock CD. And there's some covers from um, different bands, such as we've got White Line, Poison, Bon Jovi, Kiss. It's going to be released at the end of November. But you're taking, I believe, lead vocals on that EP, Rob. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a really cool little project that I've been involved with. Uh, I've known Darren for, for a while now. And um, we actually worked together on... I'm trying to think when this was, because everything sort of blends into a weird time frame and during the COVID years, everything seems to blend in. I'm pretty, sh pretty sure we recorded it in 2020, okay. right in the middle of all the COVID stuff. And it came out early 21, I think. But anyway, um, the first thing that we did together was we, we covered uh, a Paul Stanley song called Best Man For You. Um, and that featured myself and, uh, and Darren and uh, Dennis from the band Crush, uh, there was uh, a guy from Sapphire Eyes, a guy from um, Frozen Tears, I think it was. Um, and we basically just recorded that song. Um, and then we also did, uh, on the kind of like the B-side for the, for the single, we did a acoustic cover of uh, Wouldn't You Like to Know Me, which came off Paul Stanley's 78 solo album. Yeah. And uh, the reaction to, to both those songs was, was really good. Um, and Darren just got in, in touch with me um, uh, earlier this year, I think it, it, the beginning of this year, I think it was, and uh, and said, look, I've got this idea of, of doing this kind of uh, acoustic covers EP. Um, would you be interested in getting involved? So I said, yeah, so it sounds great, you know. And uh, he came up with a few song ideas to cover, and uh, I came up with a couple. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's myself uh, singing and playing guitar, acoustic guitar on it. Uh, Dennis from the band Crush is once again playing bass. Uh, Darren Phillips is on there and a guy called Dan Skeed, who's also produced and mixed the EP. Mm -hmm. And uh, it came out great. It, came, it was a lot of fun to do. It was it was quite interesting because we were, were all it was almost like a transatlantic recording because obviously I'm based here in the UK. Dennis is in, in Sweden. And um, and the other two guys were over in Australia, so it was it was all done in in separate studios and 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 put together uh, in Australia. But uh, I'm really happy with it. You know, I actually got my my copy last week, and uh, it sounds great. So yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. It was really mm. cool. I was actually going to ask that, um, but you've just clarified, you know, that obviously I'm aware that Dan and Darren are in Australia. Dennis is obviously in Sweden, but that's how East Temple Avenue obviously recorded the the music so far. Um, you know, the, the, these guys have been in Australia, you've had the likes of um, Butabi, has been in Sweden, etc. But they've brought it all together. So I take it it was recorded in a very similar manner. Just uh, you're in the UK, they're in their areas of the world. You're just basically emailing it back and forward until you get something you're happy with. Yeah, that was it. I mean, I just went in and did my, uh, I recorded my parts first. So I went in and uh, did, laid the acoustic down and the vocals and the backing vocals. Um, and then it was just sent back and then we... You know, everybody did their own parts, and then we we just email mixes back and forth and, until we were all happy with uh, how how it sounded, really. So yeah, it was actually quite an easy thing to do with it. You know, it was, it, like I said, it was a lot of fun as well. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I'm aware that you're a big fan of Kiss and Poison. Um, so when I look, obviously we've got a Kiss and a Poison song in that set list. There is that your influence, or is that pretty much agreed by everyone? Because they're great songs at the end of the day. 
Yeah, I think I think the kiss the kiss and uh, kiss one was a good. I think that was Darren's idea, but I'm never gonna uh, disagree with doing a kiss song. And and Dennis uh, from Crush, he's a, he, we speak all the time. We're like fellow kiss freaks, and <laughs> we're just constantly we're we're just massive kiss fans. So that was that was just like, yep, yeah, I'm I'm cool with doing that that song. And it was kind of like a you know not the obvious song to 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 yeah. choose. Uh, I think Darren actually came up with some other songs that. I kind of had a doodle around on the acoustic guitar and, and some songs definitely don't work acoustically. And, and I, I said, well, I think he came up with the idea for, for the Kiss song we chose. And, and uh, so I said, yeah, that, that'll work great. So um, I think he also picked the Poison one. I mean, I mean you know, I'm a big Poison fan, but that, that uh, he, he just kind of threw ideas at me. Uh, there's a couple of songs that I wasn't keen on doing and then vice versa. Um, but I was, uh, it was just kind of, we chose the songs between myself and, and Darren, really, you know, it was, uh, it, it's, it's mainly Darren's project, really, you know, if, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, I was just happy to get involved and, you know, record the songs because, you know, they sound great. They really do. Well, they do. They, they, they really do sound well. As I, as I said to you just before we recorded, I'm actually reviewing it for Rock Fiend. I've had a good listen to them. So just for, for those of maybe not aware, uh, first track's Tell Me, a brilliant White Line track. Absolutely really underrated band, White Line, in my opinion. Oh, um, one of the best. One of the best. Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Second track, Heaven by Warren. Well, come on, one of the better power ballads out there, really, isn't it? Uh, then yeah. we've got Fallen Angel by Poison. I have to say that is probably my favourite Poison song. Great. Yeah. Love that. It's classic. Just, it's pop, pop rock at its best, really. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. Great, great yeah. melodies, great hooks. And then, of course, uh, Born to Be My Baby by Bon Jovi. And uh, finally, as we say, Heaven by Kiss. It's a great mix of music. It's not all, you've not chosen five songs that sound the same. Yeah. Very different styles, and then obviously you you you've made it into that acoustic style. How how do you how difficult is that to do to take a song that is like I say I think we could say that a lot of them are classic rock songs. So how difficult is it to take that song and arrange it into an acoustic style, or does it just come naturally? Ah, uh, good question. I mean, uh, there's certain songs that just kind of work acoustically, and, and certain songs that don't, and for the most part, the songs that work acoustically best are the songs that are based around big open guitar chords. Yeah. So, like for example, like riffy type songs don't work acoustically because they're they're too busy. You know, you need those big open G major and E minor chords and stuff like that. Um, and it, it's quite obvious early on whether a song's going to work acoustically or not. Because I, I can't remember there's a couple of songs that Darren suggested. Uh, I can't remember what they were off the top of my head, but as soon as I tried to, you know, I, I picked up the acoustic guitar, I could tell straight away it was those songs weren't going to work. So um, they're mainly songs that are based around, you know, big open, you know, chords basically, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're the songs that, that tend to work best when you when you um, doing acoustic stuff. And you know, I mean, the the thing is with me as well. I mean, I I I play acoustic gigs. Um, all the time, you know, um, uh, you know, on the side of Midnight City. I mean, I've, I've, I did a tour with Mike Tramp uh, a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm going out opening for doing four shows with John Karabi at the end of this month. And then uh, next March, I'm doing the full acoustic UK tour with Ted Poli, you know, from Danger Danger. So it's something that I do a lot, you know, I, I do and I love doing it because it, it's very it's very different from, you know, running around and being the kind of the, the hair metal front man in Midnight City. It's kind of quite cool to to do that, but then also have the thing where, you know, I just stand there with an acoustic guitar and really, you know, sing and really put the songs across in that kind of acoustic format. Um, but yeah, it, it, it it's definitely the songs with the big open chords that work best. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, all these all the songs on this EP definitely are all based around those those big chords. As I say, it's due out, I understand, the 23rd of November it's due out. Now, I may be wrong in this, but I think you posted something in social media a few days ago of an unboxing of them. So yeah. you might have a huge box of it sitting in front of you right now. I, I, yeah, I actually don't. They're downstairs in my, like, I've got a storeroom in the house, which is just full of merch. 
Um, yeah, I did a bo an unboxing video. Darren asked me to do that, and I, you know, I, like I said in my video, I, I still don't get the fascination with watching somebody open a box, really. But a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the, the world nowadays confuses me. But there you go. You got to go along with it, right? <laughs> it's, it's it's trendy, apparently. It is, you know. I mean, I I don't get it, but uh, I I don't know. People seem to enjoy it, so. There we go. Well, for anyone who's seen it, I mean, you opened that box way. I mean, class, absolute class. The opening of that box was just <laughs> quite, some, quite something to see. You've clearly opened a lot of boxes. <laughs> I'm, I'm no longer an unboxing virgin. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I say, out 23rd of November, I'm understanding it is it, it's available to buy. I think in the UK, is it Replay? Yeah. You can yeah, buy it from. Yeah, replay records, which I believe is uh, in Grimsby, an actual an actual record store. You know, an old ah, school. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, an old school, old from, school, yeah. old school record store. So yeah, that that's the place to uh, to get it in the UK. Yeah. Okay, and for anyone who's maybe watching from out with the UK, I take it there's separate areas that, they, that they'll be able to purchase it from, or is it mainly going to be online for them? Uh, it, it, I think you'd have to ask Darren about that. I I think. Uh, yeah, definitely replay in the UK and Europe as well, because, you know, it's great. To, you know, it's easy to send stuff out to Europe. Um, I think, yeah, you'd have to ask Darren about it. He'll be posting about all that oh. stuff, when, you know, when uh, when it actually comes out in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, you'll be able to get it wherever you are yeah. in the world, yeah. yeah. So anyone that, that, that wants a hold of it, basically, get onto your Facebook, get onto Darren's Facebook, or... You could attend a Fiend Fest, I believe, our very own Rock Fiend Festival in a few weeks, where I believe you're going to have some for sale there. Yeah, yeah, apparently. I, I, uh, Darren said I've, I've got to take a box to uh, to to give to you guys a Rock Fiend. So, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be some on sale uh, on the Friday night when we headline. Excellent. And that takes us nicely on to that. You're going to be at Fiend Fest. I'm just trying to think, uh, a, week, a week on Friday, so it'll be the 17th that you're performing. 18th. No, 18th, apologies, the 18th, Friday the 18th, and you're going to be there with your band Midnight City, where you are headlining the first night of the first ever Fiend Fest Festival. Yeah, we're, we're really excited, we're really excited, uh, you know, Ryan's a very, you know, really good mate of mine, and, uh, you know, I remember him talking about this festival, like, such a long time ago, you know, almost maybe even, like, a couple of years ago, I remember him mentioning it, that he was going to put this, you know, attempt to put this festival together, and he's put together such a good lineup, you know. Uh, well, not just Ryan, the whole team, obviously. Um, uh, the, the lineup's fantastic, and, and we're we're just we can't wait to play um, because we've we've had actually a couple of months off. The last time we played live is uh, we played a festival out in Hamburg in Germany in September. Uh, so we haven't actually played since uh, since September. Since September, so uh, we're really looking forward to it. It's good. It's going to be a great great gig, and we're doing our full you know, uh, 75 minute headline set. So it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great, man. And uh, Glasgow in November, remember your thermals. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I remember we played, we played uh, on a tour a couple of years ago, we played up in Edinburgh. Uh -huh. And I'm pretty sure that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that was November as well, uh, around, and it was, oh, it was just so cold. So yeah, I'm going to be packing every, every, item of thermal gear i can find <laughs> so just to, to speak a bit about um uh, uh, midnight city so you've been going from around about 2017 is that right yeah yeah and the band so you've got yourself on, on vocals are the brilliant pete newdeck and drums ab absolutely phenomenal drummer a uh, great guy uh miles melee on guitar got sean and a oh, tabby great name tabby <laughs> yeah tab josh on bass um, yeah, actually, there's been actually an update since then. Pete Newdeck is is no longer in the band. Uh, cool. He, um, yeah, long, long story short, it, it just kind of wasn't really working out with him. He's he's he's. Um, I mean, there's no no hard feelings there. Oh, we're, yeah. we're still we're still friends and stuff. But he's one of these guys that just has ten thousand things going on all the time. You know what I mean? That it was it was becoming almost impossible to just. You know, I mean, I think it's with, with Midnight City, we all do outside things, but, you know, Midnight City is, is the priority. So, um, so yeah, he he's he's no longer in the band. Um, so we've got a guy called Ryan Briggs, who he, he plays, also plays in a band called Atlas. Uh, 
Oh yeah. And, uh, yep. so, so he's going to be he's going to be playing drums for us at Theme Fest and also our Christmas show uh, in Sheffield on December seventeenth. And uh, and Ryan Ryan's a, such a such a great guy, phenomenal drummer. Uh, he actually played. We did a tour back in um, in February, UK tour in February, and he actually did because Pete wasn't available for that tour either. So uh, Ryan played drums for us then, and absolutely, he was so good on that tour. So uh, so yeah, so he's going to be um, playing drums for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we've been we've been going since 2017. You know, we've we've released three albums and we toured, you know, all all over. You know, we went to uh, went to Japan in um, uh, 2019. We went to Australia. You know, we've done about three or four tours of the UK and been out to Europe. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's we, we've been busy. It's been been a, a crazy five years you know we've done a hell of a lot in five years and mm-hmm. um so we're just um just about we've literally just started recording our, our fourth album which is going to be out fingers crossed it's going to be out next summer ah oh well, hey if summer will be here before you know it you'll be taking these thermals off and putting the shots on yeah well, well hopefully yeah I mean, whether I mean that's the plan anyway. I mean, we do have a tour uh, which we've not announced yet, but we've had we 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 got a tour, a UK tour in June of next year. Uh, we just signed a new record deal, and um, we're, we're working with a different producer, and uh, we've got quite a big name lined up to to mix the album. So it's kind of it's all quite exciting, you know. It's kind of like a almost like a bit of a fresh start for us, you know. Well, oh, just to look so far, though, so the debut album, Midnight City, the self-titled in 2017, There Goes a the Neighbourhood, 2018. You then had, uh, it was a limited edition tour CD, I believe, um, Open Invite, 2019. Then another yeah. album, The Itch You Can't Scratch, 2021. Now, in five years, that's that's almost like Joe Bonamassa-like in terms of the amount of work that you're putting out there. So you guys are obviously, you're really, really busy. And I think it's important to remember as well, from 2020 on, you were then curtailed by COVID. So did did you guys continue to work through that? Did you find a way of still being creative and, you know, getting the music made? Or, or did it really kind of bring you to a halt for a while and really kind of, I don't want to use the word ruin things, but you understand what I mean? Did it just... It take- really did. It, yeah, it really did because we, we were on, at that point, we were on such a such a high because um, we'd, we'd released... Uh, there Goes a Neighbourhood, um, and that, I mean, the first album got good reviews, but There Goes a Neighbourhood just got even better, you know, it was quite a dabbling at classic rock, absolutely loved it, and yeah. it, it, it was great, and it was all going, it, it was just awesome, you know, we went to Japan, and, and and that was just absolutely incredible, then we came back from Japan, and literally, like, three months later, we went to Australia, and and then we came. What was really funny was we actually came back from Australia in March of 2020, and we'd all been obviously we'd heard about the kind of heard about the COVID stuff on the news, but it, it was definitely one of those things that oh it's it's happening you know in China it's not gonna and, and we were having the time of our lives in Australia you know we were out there in March but you know it was like 80 degrees we were up, hanging out at the beach and playing these gigs and just having such a great time. And but we hadn't been watching the news, and I remember um, it's it's really funny because uh, we, we played a festival out there, and, and all the bands were staying in the hotel. And I remember we, me and the guitar player Miles, uh, we were coming back from I don't know where we'd been, but um, Janet Gardner from Vixen was yeah, coming yeah. back, and she they'd just been to the supermarket, and she was telling us about the fact that there was no toilet paper and all this kind of, and we're like, what the hell are you talking about? And she's like, have you not been watching the news and we're like well no we're having a good time you know out drinking and having a great time and then I remember going back to my room and and putting the tv on I was like ah this is maybe a bit more serious than I thought and Mm -hmm. uh and we landed back in the UK and I think it was I think it was the following week that everything got shut down so in other words if it had been a week later we, we wouldn't have gone to Australia but um so and that it really it was almost it felt like we had the rug pulled from beneath us because when we got back from australia we had a full year of touring plans for 2020 you know festivals and tours and and it everything got scrapped so it was, it was a really it was a horrible horrible time mm-hmm. and um 
we just before we went to Australia, we just started recording our, our third album, which you can't scratch. And and we kind of had to just for, for, for a while, we had to just kind of shelve it to see, you know, what was going on, because it was that thing of nobody really knowing, is this going to last a couple of months? Is it going to yeah. be six months? Is it going to be nobody really knew? So I think I think we shelved it for about three months. And then when it kind of became obvious that this wasn't going to solve itself anytime soon, we just had to get on with it. You know, we, that album was recorded um, in five different studios mm -hmm. and we literally didn't get together once. It was just all done, you know, five different studios, Zooms, you know, Skype calls. Um, and we just had to get it done. You know, it was either... It was one of those things where you either you either have to find a way around doing it or just completely, you know, don't do anything until the pandemic goes away. But at that yeah. point, we were like, this could technically go on for another five years. So we've we've got to carry on doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But it did cause a lot of problems because we, I mean, we we did three really, you know, big budget videos, um, and they were all done sort of when we shouldn't have been together you know we, yeah, we yeah. were it was really weird we had we were hiring venues that were kind of like well yeah we can do it but you can't let anybody know that you're yeah, in yeah. the building cool. so we're busy filming videos and stuff when we, we were technically sort of breaking the law by doing it but you know uh and then even it, like the photo shoot was hilarious because we we got to the point where the album was finished and we needed to get some some um photos done for the art the album artwork and it was just you know, again, photographers weren't working. There was no venues to hire. Everywhere was closed. So in the end, the, the, the black and white picture was basically, it's all just separate pictures of the band members kind of <laughs> photoshopped together. So the, the picture of us against that, the kind of graffiti wall, it was just like, it's five different, you know, individual pictures yeah. put together. Uh -huh. um, so, so it was a horrible time, but we like, yeah. I must admit, looking back on it, how we got not only the album recorded and the album out, but also in all in the middle of all that, we also negotiated a new record deal and we shot three videos right in the middle of all that going on. So it was just like almost like we 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 were determined to not let it beat us. You know what I mean? So that was it. Yeah. So. It must be great then. You mentioned just a few minutes ago you've got your fourth album now uh, starting to come together. So it must be great to be recording that in a more traditional manner again, getting together, writing together, recording together. I take it you are going more traditional, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, it, it's uh I mean we, we still do a lot of stuff in, in separate studios, but it, we're gonna be working a, a lot, you know, a lot more together this time than we than we were on the last album. And um yeah, it, it's kind of and and like I said earlier, you know, we're working with a different producer this time round, so it, it's going to be cool working with him. And um, it, but it is going to be a bit more, you know, like a, recording a normal album uh, because I, I don't think I want to do another album in that kind of like bizarre kind of world we were working with uh, when we did the last one. So, and I think some of that came. I, I think some of that kind of frustration came out of the album as well because I think if you listen to the the first two albums, then you listen to the last album. The last album was a lot. It, it was a lot heavier, a lot more aggressive, a, a bit more, a bit a little bit darker in places. And I think that was all down to what was going on. You know, we were all really, you know, angry with what was going on, frustrated, and and I think that came out on, on the album. Whereas I think this one's kind of like going to be a bit more back to the sound of sort of like the second album. You know, yeah. which was just like a full on like hair metal party album really yeah i was actually just going to ask that what your website i should say for anyone who's not been on the midnight city website it's a great website a lot of bands don't bother with their, their websites anymore but you guys you know it's a great website you keep it updated with your merch and you know the, your album sales the latest news um so i totally lost my train of thought now rob that's gonna stay tonight <laughs> <laughs> So aye, that's what I was going for. So if you read the, the bio of you guys, you've got bios about all your favourite kinds of music, that kind of thing. You've all got very different type. Okay, it's rock, 
But for instance, you quite like the glam metal, hair metal stuff. I think it was um, Tabby quite likes Journey and stuff along that kind of line. So you've all got a very diverse mix of, of music. Has that helped to define the sound, do you think, of, of Midnight City? I know it's quite a, probably an obvious question to ask, but have you merged a lot of these sounds together to get what has become Midnight City or the signature sound of Midnight City? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I, you know, we, we have a we have a very distinct sound and, and um, you know, I don't think there's any band in the UK that sound like us at all. Yep. You know, there's a lot of, there's a big scene. There's a lot of classic rock bands. We, we're not a classic rock band. We do not fit into that genre at all. And I think we kind of stand out quite a lot from a lot of those bands. And especially, you know, we have a keyboard player as well, which oh, yeah. very, very few bands have. Um, we have a keyboard player. Um, I think the different influences that we all have, I mean, it, you know, it all helps to kind of make the sound. I mean, the, the sound is all is all based on, you know, just all the classic late 80s, early 90s American hair bands. So, yeah. you know, the obvious, you know, I mean, we get compared to Danger Danger in literally every single review I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't think there's been one review where we haven't been compared to Danger Danger, but that's obvious because we're, you know, it's one of my favorite bands and the yeah. rest of the guys love that band. Yeah. Um, but it, it's based on all that stuff. You know, we, we, you mentioned White Lion earlier on. There's bits of Poison. There's there's bits of Def Leppard. There's bits of sort of classic Bon Jovi. Um, there's, and then there is little bits of um, AOR in there as well, which kind of maybe on the journey side, you know, and I think that's kind of like the cool thing with us is that we there's little bits of the AOR stuff in there, but then there's also the glam stuff, and there's also a little, a little bit every now of the sleaze stuff. So it kind of like it's quite cool when we when we play, you know, it's not just like an AOR audience or it's not just the sleaze oh, yeah. audience. Yeah. It's like you see, you know, you can see guys with FM t-shirts, but then you can see girls turning up in Reckless Love and Crash Diet yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like because I think there is a mix of all that sort of together. And I think it's also the influences that everybody in the band brings, you know, and yeah, like I say, yeah. everyone's slight, got slightly the odd band here and there that, you know, the other the other guys aren't into. So, you know, it kind of all definitely, you know, when it's all kind of put together, it kind of gives us, you know, our, our sound really, which I said, I think it's quite, quite unique really. Yeah, that's definitely a unique sound. I mean, for anyone who's not maybe checked out any of Midnight City's albums, it, it, it well worth checking out. It's, and as you say, it's a very unique sound. It's just it's different from what's going on in, in the UK and a lot of bands at the moment. As you say, you don't fit into classic rock as such. It's definitely not AOR. It's just it's just Midnight City. Yeah, which is fine by me. <laughs> it it kind of works, you know, so, yeah. So, looking, you, you were mentioning obviously live dates. Playing live is obviously very important to you, having energetic live shows. Now, I believe that between now and the end of the year, you've obviously got Fiend Fest on the yeah, the end of November, which we've mentioned. And then you've got your Christmas show, 17th of December. Yeah, so that one, that one's that one's going to be great. That one's um, that one's close to actually being sold out, actually. Right. Um, the ticket sales are going great for that. So that's at the, yeah, the corporation in Sheffield, on Saturday, December the 17th. Um, we've got a, a really cool uh, band called Silverjet, who are also are from Sheffield. They're going to be opening for us. Um, and that's going to be great. We're going to be playing, um, we're actually going to be playing a, a few songs that we've not played in a long time. So, because we, we get a lot of, you know, most Midnight City fans will, will come to pretty much all our shows but so to mix it up a bit we're going to be playing a few songs that we haven't played in probably about like three or four years yeah. and uh and we purposely as well really kept the ticket price low so the, it's an absolute bargain you know the advanced tickets are like 10 pound 50 you know okay, when yeah. most most bands are nowadays charging at least 20 quid for, yeah. for a gig um, but we're just like we know how everybody's struggling and you know the times are hard so uh, we we purposely get kept the uh, the ticket sales down, but um, I think it's I think it's thirteen pound on the door if you want to pay on the night. But um, but I would say if you want to come to that gig, you need to be getting your tickets because I, I reckon probably within uh, the next three or four weeks it will probably have sold out. So yeah, it's but it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really fun gig that you know it's gonna be a good way to end the year, and um, 
yeah, and and kind of end the kind of site, the 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 itch can't scratch because it will yeah. be the last show of this album, you know, yeah. Tour, yeah. supporting this album, and then you know a new a new start for next year. And obviously it's the same with Fiend Fest. I was looking at the, the the tickets for that earlier on. It's selling out quickly as well. Very few tickets left. So if you want to see the last two shows of Midnight City from Fiend Fest, your Christmas show, get your get your tickets now. Basically, is the message. <laughs> That's it, mate. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and also, see, into next year, looking into next year, you already get shows booked in. You've got the Hard Rock Hell um, shows and the Sleaze one as well um, into next summer. But as you've just told us, although not announced yet, and I'm, I know you'll not be able to tell us too much about it, you're, you're going to be doing a UK tour next June. Yeah, yeah. So that one, uh, I think we'll be probably uh, announcing that, you know, about maybe February time next year. But yeah, we're doing a full UK tour. And then fingers crossed, um, you know, the, the plan is to have the album out uh, yeah. for that tour. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, hopefully that will all kind of work out. But regardless, I mean, we'll, we'll still be doing the tour anyway. Uh, and then we're, we're at the minute um, booking stuff uh, from kind of after that tour finishes, you know, for the rest of the year, yeah. uh, a couple of potential festivals in Europe and and uh, a couple of tours that we're looking at as well later on in the year. So, yeah, we're going we're to be busy. There's also um, talk of us uh, going back to Japan as well at yeah. the end of next year. So so that would be that would be great. It's plenty to keep you going. Oh, yeah. Always always busy, mate. Always busy. It keeps me out and of trouble. For, for <laughs> a band that's as busy, you're going to need plenty of merch now, I have to say. I was looking at your merch earlier on. I've, I've got my eye on a t-shirt, I have to say. It, it, it looks brilliant. <laughs> so there's some great merch there from your CDs. There's mugs. There's wristbands. It's, it's well worth going on to have a look at. So if anyone wants to buy direct from the band, any of your albums, any of your merch, where's the best place to go, Rob? Um, with the website, which is just midnightcity.com, nice and, nice and simple. Um, and then also, I mean, we're really, really active on Facebook as well. So... You can always just send us a message on Facebook and uh, me or one of the rest of the guys will get back to you. So we, we're always busy on there. Um, yeah, and we will be happy. We'll be bringing all that stuff to uh, to uh, Fiend Fest. Uh, also, the vinyl, we we, we, we did uh, the last album was on, on, we put out on vinyl as well. So um, and we're, all, we're also, um, we've just got some of the, we did a, an acoustic EP uh in 2019 uh which was kind of like we just did it as a limited number of cds for a tour that we did um uh, back in 2019 and we sold out um i mean it's, you can you can stream it but we'd actually sold out of the physical copies but we we've, we've just got some some new copies done and and they, they'll be on sale in uh in uh, glasgow as well so yeah well, I'll bet you, Rob, it would be great to see you in Glasgow and obviously say that the guys are heading down to your Christmas gig as well. They're, they're in for an absolute treat. So it, it's been great to speak to you, Rob. Absolutely great to hear everything that's going from the Darren Phillips project you're involved in. But I see a lot of work going on with, with Midnight City as well, getting the, the band back up and running, following COVID, getting the live gigs in, getting new music out. And uh, really a great fun band. I, I, I listen to it quite often driving up to work. Um, I've got about a, a one-hour drive to work every day. I've quite often got some Midnight City on. It's great music just to, to get you going. So it's been Thank an absolute you. pleasure to, to speak to you, Rob. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, hopefully get to see you up at Fiend Fest in Glasgow um, next Friday. Get a chance to, to shake your hand as opposed to just a, a virtual handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Yeah, thanks so much, mate. Really enjoyed chatting to you. No bother at all. And see, Rob, uh, best wishes for the, the rest of the year and for getting into next year. All right, mate. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Rob. Bye-bye.